Sound, sound, please. Thank you. Despite its name, look at this hobbit. Fang was an ordinary small town. I'm in love with this little in hobbit northern man. province of Chiang Mai, situated on the banks of a river. It made a convenient stopover for river traders and passengers throughout most of the year. A few barges, rafts, and sometimes even a large sailboat could usually be found moored at Fang. But all that was long ago, before the creation of the Trial of Champions. Now, once a year, Shit. the river is crowned with boats as people arrive from hundreds of miles around, hoping to witness the breaking a lot of, of settings. ancient tradition and see a victor in the Trial of Champions. I I wanted I wanted subtitles, but there's no subtitles. He's a fairly well-known UK UK TV and movie actor. Oh, I know, I've seen him before. I'm just saying, it doesn't stop me from saying I love this little Hobbit man because look at him, look at him. You just want to like ask him where his pipe weed is and see if he'll carry the One Ring to Mordor. <laughs> okay, TLDR or t tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me more. On the 1st of May each year, warriors and heroes come to Fang to face the test of their lives. Survival is unlikely, yet many take the risk, for the prize is great. A purse of 10,000 gold pieces and the freedom of Chiang Mai forever. But to become champion is no easy task. <coughs> I'm sorry. Some years ago, a powerful baron of Fang called Sukhumvit decided to bring attention to his town by creating the ultimate contest. With the help of the townspeople, he constructed a labyrinth deep in the hillside behind Fang, from which there was only one exit. The labyrinth was filled with all kinds of deadly tricks and traps and loathsome monsters. Sukhumvit had designed it in meticulous detail. Can we get him a chair that so fits? So that anybody hoping to face his challenge this chair is too big. would have to use their wits as well as weapons. That's the only chair we have? When he was finally satisfied that all was complete, he put his labyrinth to the test. He picked ten of his finest guards and fully armed, they marched into the labyrinth. They were never seen again. The tale of the ill-fated guard soon spread throughout the land, and it was then that Sukhumvit announced the first trial of champions. Messengers and news sheets carried his challenge, 10,000 gold pieces and freedom of Chiang Mai forever to any person surviving the perils of the labyrinth of Fang. The first year, 17 brave warriors attempted the walk, as it later became known. Not one reappeared. As the years passed and the trial of champions continued, it attracted more and more challenges and spectators. Fang prospered and would prepare itself months in advance for the spectacle it hosted. You're zooming morning. in too fast, slow down, slow, 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 the slow. Town slow. would be decorated, tents erected, dining halls built, musicians, dancers, fire eaters, illusionists, and every sort of entertainer hired. Thank you, Zenith. And entries registered from hopeful individuals intent on making the walk. Subtitles are coming in the next update, the so no subtitles, April, I guess. found the people of Fang and his visitors in wild celebration. Everybody sang, danced, and laughed until the day broke on the 1st of May when the town thronged to the gates of the labyrinth to watch the first challenger of the year step forward to face the trial of champions. Blink. <laughs> Having seen one of Sukhumvit's challenges nailed to a tree, you decide that this year you will attempt the walk. The walk. For the last five years, you have been attracted to it, not for the rewards, but for the simple fact that nobody has ever yet emerged victorious from the labyrinth. That's right. You intend to make this the year in which a champion is crowned. Gathering up a few belongings, you set up immediately 
Two days walk takes you west to the coast where you enter the cursed port Black Sand. Wasting no time in that city of thieves, you buy your passage on a small boat sailing north to where the river Coke meets the sea. And from there you raft upriver for the, four days. The river Coke? Until finally you arrive in Fang. I rode the Coca Cola River all the way to Fang. Time. And the town is in an almost hysterical mood of excitement. You register your entry with the officials jump, jump. and are given a violet scarf jump, jump. and a around your arm, informing everyone of your status. For three days, you enjoy Fang's greatest hospitality and are treated like a demigod. During the long merriment, you almost forget your purpose in Fang. But the evening before the trial, the magnitude of the task ahead begins to dominate your thoughts. Later, you are taken to a special guest house and are shown your room. There is a splendid four-poster bed with satin sheets to help you rest. But there is little time left for sleep. You awake in Ang Morpork. You are greeted by Just Rincewind, dawn, the wizard. A trumpet call awakens you from vivid dreams of flaming pits and giant black spiders. Minutes later, there is a knock on your door and a man's voice rings out saying, your challenge begins soon. Please be ready to leave in 10 minutes. What are you minutes? You climb out of bed, walk over to the window and open the shutters. Already people are thronging the streets, moving quietly through the morning mist, spectators. No doubt on their way to the labyrinth, hoping to find good vantage points from which to watch the competitors. Walking over to a wooden table on which your trusty sword and shield lie, you pick them up and cut the air with a mighty sweep, wondering which beasts your sword's sharp edge may soon have to meet. You open the door into the corridor and a small man greets you with a low bow as Is it you emerge you? from your bedroom. Is it you? Please follow me, he says. He turns to his left and walks quickly towards the stairs at the end of the corridor. Walking through a party... Are you not to the ten? You see Baron Sippingit himself standing by the entrance waiting to greet the contender in the trial of champions. You count five others standing proudly in line, their violet scarves displayed for all to see. There are two bare-chested barbarians dressed in furs. They stand completely motionless, legs straight and slightly apart, arms thrust forward to rest on the hilts of their long, double-headed battle axes. A sleek elven woman with golden hair and feline green eyes is adjusting This is the, the longest letter to penthouse I've ever seen! A leather tunic. Of the two remaining men, one is covered from head to foot in iron plate armor with a plumed helmet and a crested shield. The other is cloaked in black robes, only his dark eyes showing between the swords with black faced scarf. What up, Darf? Long knives. A wire garrote and other silent death weapons hang from his belt. The five contenders acknowledge your arrival with almost imperceptible nods of the head, and you turn to face the exultant crowd for the last time. Suddenly, a hush falls over the crowd as Baron Sukhumbit steps forward, holding six bamboo sticks. You draw one from his outstretched hand, and you read the word, fifth. Fifth? Then the trial begins. One, two, three, four, fifth! The night is I plead the fifth! He salutes the crowd the before disappearing into the tunnel, and is followed half an hour later by the elf. Next goes a barbarian, and then the dark assassin. Alter self, intended use of chatter base. Indeed. It's your turn. But before embarking Kelly, on your Kelly, adventure, what's up? we must first determine your own strengths and weaknesses. Mm. Yes. You have in your possession a sword, mm -hmm. a shield, and a backpack for carrying provisions for the trip. 
you have been preparing for your quest by training yourself in swordplay and exercising vigorously. To see how effective your preparations have been, dice will be rolled to determine your skill, stamina, and luck scores. What are these dice you or, speak of? if you wish to begin your adventure immediately, you can choose between three ready-made adventurers. Fuck that! Fuck that! If you pick ready-made adventurers, get the fuck out! Get out! You roll your characters in my house! <laughs> Chat, I asked this question yesterday, but I think it, I think it bears repeating today. And uh, I just want to know the answer. If you guys have it, feel brave tonight. How brave? Brave enough to do battle with hideous monsters, hmm? Brave enough to sneak around dank castles in the dark and chance being the next victim of a dragon strike? Ah! Right. <laughs> Roll. First. Camera two. Well, roll for your initial level of skill. This reflects your sword skill and fighting expertise and will be determined by rolling one die and adding six. All right. That was terrible. Wait, re-roll for skill? Now, hold on a second. Can you just re-roll? Oh, you get one mulligan. Okay. Uh, well, let's see. Let's find out. Hold on. Can I, can I just keep doing this? That seems silly. Okay. <clears throat> Hold on. I'm gonna get that one back because I, I thought it was built, if there, if there was a built-in, like one built-in mulligan, I would have taken it. But if you can just keep re-rolling. There we go. Okay. Next, we'll roll for your initial stamina, which represents your strength. So the higher your stamina score, the longer you will survive. This will be determined by rolling two dice and adding 12. Okay. Hey, I'm good with that. Okay, that was a good roll. Next will roll for your initial luck, which represents how lucky an adventurer you are. Luck and magic are facts of life in the fantasy world you're about to explore. What up, Chemical Lion? Thank you for 23 this months. This is determined by rolling one die. And adding, and adding six. Six. Ooh, suspenseful. Big money, big money, that's good. Hell yeah. Continue. You may also take a magical potion with you to aid you on your quest. Each bottle of potion contains two measures, so can be used twice during an adventure. You can choose from a potion of skill that restores your skill points to their initial amount, a potion of strength that restores your stamina points or to a their potion of amount, motion of the ocean or a potion of fortune that not only restores your luck points to their initial amount, but will also increase your initial luck score by one each time it's used. 
Hmm. I think I got to go with the strength because my strength is is bad. But my gut says luck, right? Lastly, before you begin your quest, you are given enough provisions for 10 meals. When you eat a meal, your stamina score will increase by four points. But don't forget, your stamina can never exceed the initial amounts you've just set. Okay. You have a long way to go. And a so short time provisions. to get there. Wisely. Wisely. Now it is your turn to salute the crowd. Holding your violet scarf aloft, you Raylan, take one final thank deep you for the four months. cool, fresh air before turning to pass between the stone pillared gateway into Sukhumvit's corridors of power to face unknown perils in the walk through the mighty Baron's death trap dungeon. dungeon. Woo! He said the titular lie! Yeah. Oh, wow. Got some binaural audio going on. I don't know if this is going to be as good as man standing, but... The we'll clamor of the excited spectators gradually fades behind you as you venture deep into the gloom of the cavern. Large crystals hang from the tunnel roof at 20 meter intervals, radiating just enough soft light for you to see your way. As your eyes gradually become accustomed to the near darkness, you begin to see movement all around. Spiders and beetles crawling up and down the chiseled walls disappear quickly into cracks and crevices as they sense your approach. Rats and mice scurry along the floor ahead of you. Droplets of water drip into water. small pools with an eerie plopping sound which echoes down the tunnel. The air is cold, moist and dank. After walking Stank, slowly bro. along the tunnel for about five minutes, you arrive at a stone table standing against the wall to your left. On it, there are six boxes, one of which has your name painted on its lid. What do you think? Do I take the cash or do I go for the mystery box? Cash of the box, come on audience, tell me how cash, cash of the box. They offer me $200 or the box. What do you guys think, box? Are we going for the box? <laughs> The lid of the box lifts off easily. Inside, you find two gold pieces and a note written on a small piece of parchment addressed to you. After placing the gold in your pocket, you read the message, which says, well done. Thank you. At least you had the sense to stop and take advantage of the token aid given to you. Now I can advise you that you will need to find and use several items. Do you have any more aids to, to give triumphantly. me? I like my AIDS. Death trap Can you give dungeon. me as much as possible? Signed, Sukumvit. Hey, Sukumvit! Memorizing the advice on the note, you tear it into tiny pieces and continue north along the tunnel, where you come to a junction. A white arrow painted on one wall points west. On the floor, you can see wet footprints made by those who entered before you. It's hard to be sure but it looks as though three of them followed the direction of the arrow, while one decided to go east. Ooh. East or west, guys? Mm. There's three. There's three going off to the west, three footprints going off to the west, and one footprint going off to the east. Let's see.
This is a good use here. Hold on. One minute. Go. Poll in the chat. Poll in the chat. West or east? And if you want to vote on mobile, you just type slash vote space one for west, two for east. You can actually, you can actually vote on mobile slash vote space one for west, two for east. Man, you guys are f fucking idiots. And the results are in. If you don't want to vote, that's up to you. East it is. 63% of you say east, so we're going east. One pair of footprints. Because that's from when I was carrying you. Ahead. You can see a large obstruction on the tunnel floor. Although it is too dark to make out exactly what it is. It's never too dark to make out. The wet eastbound footprints you have been following carry on towards the obstruction. Oh, I'm, I'm going to continue east. I'm not even going to put this up for a vote. You see that the obstruction is a large brown boulder-like object. You touch it with your hand. What does it smell like? You're surprised to find that it is soft and spongy. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, slice or climb? Slice or climb? What do you guys think? Poll is in the chat. Slash vote space one for slice, space two for climb. Now, there's probably going to be a lot of these choices, so I might just stop doing it unless it's really important. And it takes a minute each time to do these polls, so... I think I might just start, like, asking specific people in chat. Like, calling you out by name and asking what you want me to do. Because this is, this is terribly long. All right, slice, 67% say slice. Your sword easily pierces the thin outer casing of the giant spore ball. A thick brown cloud of spores bursts out of the ball oh, God. and envelops you. Oh God! Some of the spores stick to your skin no! and start to itch terribly. You lose two stamina points. No! As great lumps come up on your face and arms, and your skin feels as if it is on fire. Ah! Frantically scratching your itching lumps, ah, my you lumps. step over the now deflated spore ball. Pressing on east, you turn <laughs> left, which heads north for as far as you can see. The footprints you are following start to peter out as the tunnel becomes gradually drier. Soon you are beyond the dripping roof and the pools on the floor. You notice the air becoming hotter and you find yourself panting even though you are walking quite slowly. In a small recess on the left-hand wall, you see a section of bamboo standing on its end. Lifting it down, you see it is filled with a clear liquid. Your throat is painfully dry and you feel a little dizzy from the heat in the tunnel. All right. Uh, let's see. Arcto, 
Hey, Arcto, north or drink? Tell me, Arcto. Drink that shit. All right, drinking it, we are. Taught by, thank you for 14 months, by the way. Opus AOA with 18. Go to right with 14. Love you guys. The water in the bamboo pipe is welcomely refreshing. <gasps> Just water. And adds one stamina point. Yeah! It also Take contains that, spores. a magical solution, <gasps> which will enable you to be exposed to melting point temperatures without harm. Fucking Discarding the bamboo, yeah. you start off north again, in good spirits. Dude, fire you resistance, find yourself hell yeah! Dripping with sweat, as the temperature continues to rise. As you struggle on, the heat intensifies until it becomes so unbearable that you feel yourself begin to pass out. Although the temperature in the tunnel is higher than you could normally tolerate, the liquid from the bamboo pipe keeps you alive. Convenient. Mercifully, after a few moments, the temperature drops rapidly and soon feels almost cool again. On the left-hand side of the tunnel... All right, flip monk, get ready. You get the next choice. It has a small iron plate in it, which looks like it might slide open. Iron plate that might slide open. Okay, flip monk, it's on you. North, slide the plate or open the door. And the next uh, choice get, goes to uh, Vex Cheese. So get ready, you're next, Vex Cheese. Slide it. Let's slide. Let's do the slide, slide, but that's the pass. I got something brand new for that ass. The small plate slides open easily. And you find yourself peering into a room with a deep pit in the floor behind the door. On the opposite wall, there is a coil of rope hanging on one of two iron hooks. All right, Vex Cheese. Continue north or open the door, jump over the pit, and take the rope. Well, you can just say open or north. And then uh, who's after that? Let's do Hypnotic Pigeon. You'll get the next choice after this. Indiana Jones, that shit. <laughs> The door swings open into the room, and you step back and jump over the pit. You put the rope in your backpack and jump back over the pit to leave the room and head north. Yeah! Ahead, you see that the tunnel turns sharply to the left. You turn a corner and almost bump straight into two fierce-looking orcs armed with morning stars and wearing leather armor. You are totally unprepared for them. Oh, And good. struggle to ready your weapon. Oh, great. Oh, During hello. your adventure, <laughs> you'll enter into combat a number of times. And the further you go, the tougher your opponents will be. Combat takes place over several rounds and your attack strength is based on yours and your enemy's skill scores. For each round of battle, you're right. I didn't. We'll roll two dice for you and two for your opponent, adding the results to your skill scores. These are your respective attack strengths. Whoever's attack strength is the highest wins that round of combat. If you both had the same attack strength in a round, then it will be a tie. In some battles, you can take an opportunity to escape. But beware. If you do run away, your opponent will automatically score one hit on you as you flee, costing you two stamina points. So be sure you... Attack of opportunity it. bullshit. Such is the price of cowardice. cowardice. I fucking knew he was going to say that. You are playing using the traditional battle system from the original Death Trap Dungeon book. At the start of each round, you'll have a short time to decide to fight 
or to build up your stamina by eating your provisions or taking a potion. Taking a nap. Have one. Taking a shit. After each battle round, you'll be able to test your luck. By using luck in battles, you can either score a more serious wound on your opponent or minimize the effects of a wound scored on you. If you test your luck after you have just wounded your opponent, we'll roll two dice, and if the total is the same or less than your current luck score, you will have been lucky and will take an extra two points from your opponent's stamina. Oh, so Ty but goes to the lucky one. Greater, then the damage to your opponent will be halved. If your opponent has just inflicted a two stamina wound on you, a lucky roll will halve that damage. But an unlucky roll will take an additional stamina point. Okay. One last thing. Testing your luck has a cost. Each time you test your luck, your luck score will be reduced oh. by one point. Balls! The orcs roar. And as you draw your sword, one of them swings its morning star at you, which sinks agonizingly into your left thigh, costing Ow. you three stamina points. Well, wait a minute! I don't get it like... You stagger backwards. What the fuck? But manage to regain your balance in time to defend yourself. Fortunately, the tunnel is too narrow for both orcs to attack you at once, so you fight them. Surprise round, yeah. One at a time. All right, one at a time. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Fuck, okay, I gotta do these myself, sorry. Oh yeah, y'all! The orc is strong, but slow. And you're able to strike hard with your sword. Strike him again! Ah, oh, the White Knight always tries! Your shield protects you from the Orc's frenzied attack while you're able to hack at its leg. Do it again! Oh, shit. Uh, oh. You parry, but your enemy Fuck. is strong, and you crack your head on the floor as it knocks you to the ground. God damn it! No, kill him! He's almost dead. He's got one left! We can do this! Fuck! The Orc's Morning Star is a formidable Fuck! Life, and you can't stop it smashing into your ankles. Come on! Knocking you off balance. Come on, we got this. Just kill the first Orc, then eat some provisions. There you go, that's better! You raise your sword to parry the attack, and are able to kick the Orc hard in the stomach. The first orc slumps lifeless to the floor, so you turn your attention to the other. Eat. You quickly eat some provisions, increasing your stamina by four points. There we go. Oh, it doesn't cost me a turn. Okay. Oh, he's a little bit beefier than the other guy. God damn it! The orc runs at you, smashing you painfully into the wall. Look! Just anything but snake eyes, or anything but boxcars. There we go. You try your luck, and your luck is in. <laughs> your luck is in? Oh, I got you, motherfucker! That should be a crit! Slow. And you're able to strike hard with your sword. Oh, so... Oh, fuck it. Oh, my time ran out. Oh, no, I did. I did. Okay. You try your luck. And your luck is in. Inside one of the orc's pockets... Oh, so I'd get him double you damage. You find one gold piece. Okay. And a hollow wooden tube. You put your findings in your backpack and set off west. As you walk along, droplets of water again start falling from the tunnel ceiling. Heading west, you see wet footprints made by the same boots that you followed earlier. They lead to a closed iron door 
in the right-hand wall of the tunnel. Hypnotic Pigeon, this is you, remember. You seem to go any further. All right, Hypnotic Pigeon, this is on you. Go west, open the door. Uh, this is, the game title for Indie Days will most often be in the upper left-hand corner if you want to know what game I'm playing. Alligator Fuckhouse, thank you for 13 months. The King of Mayhem with five. Open. Hypnotic Pigeon says open. The door opens into a large chamber. Next up is you, Dr. Akek. Where you are shocked to see one of your rivals who has obviously met a sudden gory death. Oh, trap. It is one of the barbarians, and he is impaled on several long iron spikes that are fixed to a frame which has sprung out of the floor. A lot of debris litters the floor concealing a hidden tripwire which he must have stepped on that one release that one right there got to be in rough. the far wall is an alcove in which you can see a silver goblet standing on a small wooden table all right akek close the door and continue west walk towards the alcove or walk over to search the barbarian so go look at the cup the barbarian or just fucking forget it. Alcove it is! All right, Alcove it is. All right, next choice is on, uh, let's see. South Texas Spartan, you got the next choice. Alcove. You walk slowly over to the Alcove, carefully checking the floor for any more hidden traps. Look up, adventurer! You see that the goblet contains a sparkling red liquid. <coughs> All right, Spartan, it's you, Texas Spartan, let's go. Do we leave and go west, leave the goblet and search the barbarian or drink the red liquid? Eesh. Eesh. South Texas Spartan, where are you? There you are, drink. Oh, of course. God damn it, I didn't want you to pick that one. Why would you drink this? This is so dumb. All right, next choice is uh, Stream Bonker. You got the next choice, Stream Bonker. As you lift the goblet, it releases a sprung catch and a dart shoots out of the wooden table leg. <clears throat> this will be a test of your luck. Oh, my luck. Well, roll two dice. And if the number rolled is equal to or less than your current luck score, you have been lucky. But if the row is higher than your luck score, then your luck has run out. Isn't it? Oh. Yes! That's good. Six hundred nine. Your reflexes are sharp, and you quickly <laughs> jump aside. Oh. The <gasps> dart whistles past, only just missing you, and thuds into the opposite wall. You see the goblet lying on the floor, and the red liquid running away in rivulets over the gray stone. At least the goblet may be of use. So you put it in your backpack. Hell yeah. All right, leave the chamber, continue west, or walk back to search the barbarian stream bonker. That's on you. And then after that, let's do uh, Blue Lord. You get the next choice. Barbarian, I figured as much. Now, hold on. Can I take? Oh, I see. Okay, fortune potions. This this replenishes how much of my luck did it say? You guys remember how much? Was it four? Oh, just one. Just one. Because I know the provisions heal four. Well, we can do that. Let's do that. Oh, it gives you max plus one. Okay, okay. So let's get it down to like eight. Until we like, if it goes down to eight, then we'll then we'll fill it back up again. All right. So barbarian, it is. Uh, next choice. To, 
Oh, Blue Lord, you got the next choice. The pouch on the barbarian's <clears throat> belt is empty, apart from some strange-looking dried meat wrapped in a cloth. Oh, Blue Lord, what are we doing? Are we eating the, the dead barbarian's meat? Or are we leaving the chamber and heading west? Eat the meat. All right. The meat uh, contains shifty herbs, effect. which increase your strength. Herbs. three to your stamina score. Yeah. Oh, you leave the chamber I ate the meat too fast. To right. continue west. I ate the fucking provisions. The passage Shit. soon leads to a junction. I missed that on one point. Where Hold you on. notice more footprints on the floor, possibly as many as three pairs heading north from the south passage. You decide to follow them to where the passage opens out into a wide cavern, which is darker, but much drier. Ahead, you see the footprints gradually fade, then disappear. There is a large idol in the center of the cavern that must be six meters high. In its head are jeweled eyes, each as big as your fist. On either side of the idol stand two giant stuffed bird-like creatures. Okay. All right, Shifty. Do we walk through the cave uh, to the tunnel on the opposite wall or climb the idol and take the jewels? I don't even, I don't even know why I'm asking. It's gonna be the fucking most dangerous choice every time. Oh no, Shifty says tunnel! Oh! All right, Shifty. Next one is, uh, let's see, let's do J Master. The J Master, you get the next choice after this. All right, so we're gonna walk through the cave to the tunnel. Not much farther down the tunnel, you come to a closed door on your left. Putting your ear to the door, you listen intently but hear nothing. Failed my perception check. Open the door or walk north, J Master. Sounds safe to open. Sounds good. That's that's a good plan. All right. Uh, let's see. CJ, you get the next choice. You enter a room which is small and completely empty. As soon as you are inside, the door slams shut behind you. Ah! Suddenly a voice booms out of nowhere, what shouting. What are you doing in this Welcome to Death Trap Dungeon. The ingenious killer labyrinth of my master. Oh shit, we won't, we're Adventurer, in. I trust you will pay your respects to my master by shouting out his name. Okay, CJ. Shout succumbent is a worm or shout hail succumbent. Well, the name is right. Do you say fuck you or hello and, you know, good, good day? CJ says hail. Hail succumbent. Uh, and next will be Mr. 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 You got the next choice. You take a deep breath and shout, Hail Sukhumvit! Or Once again, the mysterious voice calls out, only this time its tone is full of contempt and derision. Oh, fuck! So, we have a sniveling weed in our midst, do we? Sneers the voice. My master has a special gift for you, loathsome creep. Suddenly, water starts pouring into the room through a hole in the ceiling. It soon rises above your ankles, and there is no apparent way of escape. You wade back to the door. It is firmly locked, but in desperation, you try ramming it with your shoulder. All right. We'll see how skillful you really are. Okay. Remember, a roll equal to or less than your skill score means you have been skillful. Oh, but a shit. But a higher than your skill 
could end that. Seven. Ugh. Logo, wow. You are not strong Ooh. enough to force open the heavy door. <laughs> nope. The water is now waist high and you are exhausted from your efforts. The water level rises quickly and you find yourself <laughs> floating ever upwards until your face is pressed against the ceiling. Ah! You are soon completely immersed and unable to hold your breath any longer. <laughs> your adventure ends here. What the fuck? One roll? On one fucking roll? Oh my god, that's brutal! Oh, there. Okay, so there are save points. Oh. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay. Not much farther down the tunnel, you come to a closed door on your left. Well, I guess I already said who you get the choice. Do you want me to open the door again or keep walking north? Uh, uh, Mr. Mista, it's on you. We opened the door last time. We know what happens. Mr. Mista says, says north. All right, let's see what goes, what happens when we go north. Uh, and then after that, let's do a non-sub this time. Let's do Dark Scarlet Mage. All right, Dark Scarlet Mage, you get the next choice. The tunnel twists and turns, but keeps steadily north. Ahead, you see a thin shaft of blue light streaming down from the ceiling to the floor. You find someone's sketchbook of the Joker. And you can see images of laughing faces in the light. Okay, Dark Scarlet Mage. Walk around or walk through the light. Ah, <laughs> Dr. Claw gifting the sub to Dark Scarlet Mage! What did you, uh, you didn't say anything. Dark Scarlet Mage. I missed it. If you, did you say it already? Walk through. Okay, walk through the light. Excellent. All right, next one is going to Faminki. I haven't done a mod yet. Faminki, do you get the next choice? Walk through the light. As soon as your head goes under the blue light, you hear the sound of muffled voices. The faces are no longer laughing. Uh oh But have changed their expressions to one of despair and oh, anguish. No. Oh. A young girl's sad face hovers in front of you. And she begins to whisper a poem. Transfixed, you listen intently, believing that she has a special message for you as she recites, when, when corridor, corridor doth water, water meet, do, do not, not make a quick retreat. Take, take a breath, breath and jump deep in, in if your trial you hope to win. <gasps> Memorizing the spirit girl's poem, you step through the shaft of light and quickly head on north. You come to an arched doorway set in the right-hand wall of the tunnel. The heavy stone door is closed, but there is an iron latch and a round handle. Continue along the tunnel or try the door, Fimikid. Uh Next choice will go to Jolly Joker after this one. Try the door, all right. Lifting Jolly Joker, you're next. And pushing the heavy stone door open, you find yourself in a large cabin. The light is dim and murky, but as your eyes begin to adjust, you see that the walls are covered in green algae, algae? and running with moisture. The floor is strewn with straw. The atmosphere is warm, damp, and fetid, and a soft humming sound fills the air. You step gingerly through the straw towards a corner of the cabin where there appears to be a shallow pit. Peering warily into the pit, you are disgusted to see a mass of pale, writhing worms, some as much as half a meter long. Nauseated, 
You're about to turn away when <gasps> you notice that their undulating bodies oh, fuck. are swarming around a dagger. Oh, no. Its point held fast in a crack in the pit floor. The hilt is cased in black leather, studded with opals. Leave the it. blade is fashioned from a strange reddish-black burnished metal. It's cursed! Leave you it! You have never seen before. You long to touch the dagger. No, I don't! But this would mean plunging your hand <laughs> in among the writhing world. All right. Jolly Joker, back away in disgust or reach for the dagger. Fuck it, reach for that shit. All right, I'll reach for it. All right, EA Skeezy, what up? Thank you for 17 months. Welcome back. Uh, all right, so let's see. Uh, Zader, Zider, you got the next choice, so get ready. Taking a deep breath, you lean over the pit and plunge your forearm into the mass of wriggling worms. They are cold and clammy. No, I your left! Extremely your nasty. other left! But at least they are harmless, and you are able to seize the dagger by the hilt. You give it a hard tug, and it comes away from the crack in Indeed. which the pit was embedded. Admiring its beauty, and wondering whether it might once have belonged to some luckless contestant, you put the opal-studded dagger firmly in your belt and leave the cabin. As you make your way back to the oh, doorway... Oh, there we go. The buzzing sound increases in intensity. Oh, no. And you look around... We ...desperately are to discover going where it's coming to from. die! Glancing up in the nick of time, you see a huge and grotesque black shape of a giant fly emerging from a recess high up in the cavern wall. As it's it gets Jeff closer, Goldblum, no! you realize that it's at least one and a half meters long. Its opaque wings Is that vibrate, big? Are meters making big? the sickening buzzing noise you can hear. And its six black, hairy legs are poised to grasp your body. Below, its multifaceted eyes is a long, shiny black proboscis, which darts in and out. Oh, venomously. he has a magic weapon, the proboscis. You have stolen the giant fly's treasure from her brood of maggots. And you must face the consequences. It's time to test your luck again. Remember, a roll equal to or less than your luck score means you've been lucky. But a roll higher oh, than your shit. luck could end. Oh, shit. Bad. Luck score. Luck! Under a nine! Yeah! Nailed it! The giant fly swoops down again to try to capture you. But this time you manage to evade its outstretched legs. Stepping back, you draw your sword to prepare to fight the hideous insect as it turns to attack you again. Oh, 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 oh. Attack it. Come on, big money, big money. Oh, farts! Again, it grabs you with four of its legs, climbing quickly and dropping you to the floor, landing heavily. Come on, it's even too. No, God the damn it! charges at you and slams into you like a cannonball, hitting your chest and knocking you flat to the Fuck. floor. It's even Stevens too. Come on, hit my turn. There you go! You spin your sword around your head, clipping the fly and removing part of one of its legs. One more time, get him again. Hit him again! There you go, big 10, big 10! Out of baby! You hurl yourself at your enemy, fist flailing, and land a stunning blow. One more attack, get him, get him! Oh flying God! Just the one! The fly I got one! Did acidic saliva into your face? It burns your eyes, and you scramble to wipe it off. Come on! Hit him again! Hit him again! Ah! Oh, fuck 
again. What again? He grabs Son you of a bitch! With his legs, climbing quickly and dropping you to the floor, landing heavily. This is ridiculous. Seven. No! Fly God charges damn up it! And stamps into you like a cannonball, hitting your chest and knocking you flat to the floor. What is this horse shit? Oh my god! The fly is just out of reach. The fly sprays its acidic saliva into your face. It burns your eyes and you scramble to wipe it off. Come on. If I don't hit him, I'm going to take provisions after this if I don't hit him this time. There you go. That's a 10. The creature flies at you so close you can't use your weapons. Grabbing it by its legs, you swing around, slamming it into a wall. Now, low roll. Low roll. Under a nine. Easy peasy. Under a nine. Easy peasy. You try your luck. <laughs> Two more. There you go. Pleased with your victory, you wipe the vile yellow slime from the blade of your sword and walk quickly to the door, back to the tunnel, and head north. Man, my luck is... Well, luck the was tunnel in. ends shortly at a junction. Looking left and right, you see a narrow passage disappearing into the dim distance. There we go. Okay, uh, who was trying? Oh, Zader, go east or go west? Oh wait, oh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you choose, oh, this is where we are. So both unexplored. So it doesn't like either one is is unexplored. So east coast. All right, east coast it is. The beast coast. You got the beast or the best coast? Uh, Soulstorm Brew. Thank you for thirty three months. East it is. You walk down the passage and soon find yourself standing at the edge of a deep, dark pit. Deep, dark pit. The passage continues east on the other side of the pit. All right, next up. Uh, you think Super you Legolas. could probably jump over the pit. You get the next choice. You are not sure. You're not sure. I'm not sure there if I can jump over it. There is a rope hanging down from the ceiling over the center of the pit. But I have a rope. Okay. All right, Super Legolas is on you. Reach for the rope with your sword to enable you to swing across the pit. Jump over the pit carrying all your possessions. Throw your shield over the pit and jump after it. So you can just say one, two, or three. If you're listening, Super Legolas. Uh Maybe Super Legolas didn't hear me. Okay, maybe we'll move on to somebody else. Let's do um. Yeah, Super Sea Lion. You're a super. You can take over. Go ahead, super. Another super takeover for Super Legolas. Throw your shield over the pit. Okay. Just as you're about to release the shield and throw it over the pit, uh, Chief Greenleaf, it you're slips next. from your fingers and rolls away. You are unable to catch it before it falls over the edge of the pit. What the fuck? Clattering down its side. <laughs> are you kidding me? The loss of your shield reduces your fighting ability, decreasing your skill points by one. Oh my Cursing God! Cursing your own clumsiness, you step forward, leap across the pit, and land safely on the other side. Come on! You waste no time, but head off. Did I just like, like left hand throw the it, like eh, and throw it just right, left turn and dunk it into the north, pit? As far as you can see. You soon arrive at a closed wooden door in the left hand wall. Closed wooden door in the left hand wall. Okay, open the door, keep going north, Chief Greenleaf. 
It is on you. And then the next choice will be to chug and monkey. Open the door, says Chief. All right. Chug and monkey, get ready. You get the next choice. The door opens into a large candlelit room filled with incredibly lifelike statues of knights and warriors. A white-haired old man dressed in tattered rags jumps out from behind one of the statues and starts to giggle. <laughs> Though he looks like a fool, the sparkle in his eyes makes you think there is more to him. In a high-pitched voice, he says, Oh, good. Another stone from my garden. Sitley? I'm glad you have come to join your friends. Now, I'm a fair man, so I'll ask you a question. If you answer correctly, I'll let you go free. But if your answer is wrong, I'll turn you to stone. Ah! He starts to chuckle again. Oh, shit. Obviously pleased with your arrival. Uh oh, chugging monkey. We got a riddle, maybe. Oh, maybe, no, we got a choice to make, Chuggy Monkey. Run, attack, or wait for his question. Run, attack, or wait, Chuggy Monkey. What do you think? Wait, okay. So we'll wait for his question. And then the next choice will be to, uh, let's do another non-sub X, XLRT, XLRTY. I don't know how to say XLRTY. I don't know how to say your name, but you get the next one, all right? We're waiting. The old man points at one of the statues, and you recognize it immediately. Excellent. Okay. It is the knight who started the trial of champions. The agonized look on his face locked in stone for eternity. The old man smiles, saying, This man weighs 100 pounds plus half his weight. How much does he weigh? What will you answer? All right. This is up to you, Exlert. 100 pounds plus half his weight. One fifty. I'm high. <laughs> Still smiling. The old man looks at you and says quietly, wrong. And before you can do anything else, he mumbles a few strange words into the air. You feel your muscles harden and your skin go taut. You start to panic, but there is nothing you can do to stop the petrification of your body. Oh no! Your adventure is ends. a, oh! <laughs> so he weighs 100 pounds plus half his weight. So half his weight would be 100, 200 pounds, right? It would have to be an even number. And it'd have to be more than 100. So an even number more than 100 would be 200. Yeah, 100 plus... 0.5x equals y. So, 0.5x equals y uh, minus 100. So, y minus 100 over uh, divided by 2. Right? 0.5 times. <clears throat> Oh, X. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that's right. One, There's one variable, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Who is next? Uh, let's see. 150 is an even number. You know, Runavaya, you're right. But I didn't think of it like that. But you're right. You're absolutely right. You're technically correct, which is the best kind of correct. Um, 
You know what? You're so smart. Who said that? Well, who was I fucking with? Runavaya, you get the next choice then, Runavaya. Next choice is you. The tunnel makes a sudden left turn and continues north as far as you can. Okay. Do you want to go in the door again and talk to the old man, or do you want to keep going north? We're going to skip the old man and go north. Okay, sounds good. Only a few meters further down the passage, you see another you got closed the next. door in the left-hand wall. The letter X is scratched into its center panel. See, it was X! Solve for X! Putting your ear to the door, you listen intently, but can hear nothing. All right, medicated. Open the door or walk north. Uh, it took me an hour to figure out what how they wanted her to do the problem. Yeah. Oh shit! X gonna give it to you. <laughs> knock knock! Don't open the door. It's real. Keep walking north with the fucking. <laughs> God, I wish I had a I had a rhyme for that. I know it's gonna say feel or something, but. All right, keep walking north. Fuck that door. The passage, slowly starts to climb. All right, Leading Indie Wolf. You relentlessly northwards. You're next, Indie Wolf. There are no doorways or even an alcove to investigate, and you become less guarded as you plod on. After a while, you become so nonchalant that you fail to notice a. Th oh shit! That cuts off the dialogue. Whoops. Thin trip wire stretched low across the passage. Oh fuck! It is only when your foot catches it, and you hear a distant rumble that you realize your mistake. The rumbling sound swells to an almost deafening level. And suddenly, out of the gloom of the tunnel ahead, you see a massive boulder rolling towards you, gathering speed with every second. You turn to flee the oncoming boulder. You run faster than you have ever run in your life. But still, the boulder is catching up on you. This is a tough one. A test of both your skill and stamina. We'll roll two dice. Okay. And if the number rolled is equal to or less than both your skill and stamina scores... Oh, God! You should be fine. Oh, no, but I gotta roll under a six to get both. If the number rolled is more than either of them, then things could end very badly. Indeed. I gotta roll under a six! Oh, God! Low! Give me the low! Six matched it! Your fear gives you a new surge of energy, and somehow your tired legs manage to keep you in front of the boulder. Ahead, on your right, you see the welcome sight of a doorway. Tie goes to me. You lunge at the door, and mercifully it flies open. The boulder thunders past you, and you are left lying exhausted on the floor of a large room. Looking around you, you see an alcove in the west wall Fuck and a you, stone Sam. chair in the middle I hate of the your room. fortress! Sitting in the chair is the skeleton of an armed warrior, possibly a contestant from years gone by. And the tomb of Sir Richard? The skeletal fingers of its right hand grip a crumpled parchment. Oh, shit. Who'd I give this to? I don't remember who I gave this to. Um... Oh, Indie Wolf, take the parchment. That was you, yep. Take the parchment, says Indie Wolf. And next, we'll give it to... Beefy Jaguar. Beefy Jaguar, you get the next choice. Touching the parchment has precisely the effect you had feared. The skeleton lurches forward. Yeah. And rising from its chair oh, in a God. series of jerky movements, raises oh, its sword to strike you. Run away! Lunging sideways, you draw your sword to defend yourself. And I breathe. 
slowly. All right. Attack! Oh, he's got. Oh, he's got me beat, dude. Look at that. He's got an eight. Oh, he beats you me. You both swing for each other. No, it's tied. In confusion, both miss. Oh, okay. Do it again. Okay, so I got to beat him by two. This is. Yeah, got you him. Dodge to the side as the warrior swings its sword. You kick out, knocking its legs out from under it. Luck. Luck it. Underneath the 12, we're good. Underneath the 12 is all I need. We're good. Whip. Try your luck. And your luck is dead. Can I do one more? Fuck, I gotta hit him one more time. Okay. Here we go. Hit. Big hit. Big roll. There you go, big 10. Yeah, baby. You run around <laughs> the skeleton, smashing your sword into its arm. Once again, you reach for the parchment. Only this time lying amidst a pile of broken bones. I love this game so hard. Unfolding it, you see a map of a room with a drawing of a hideous creature inside it. Beneath the monster is a rhyme which reads, Should you meet the manticore, of its tail beware. Shield yourself against the spikes flying through the air. God damn you it. Fold up the piece of parchment. Shield yourself. And put it in your pocket. <laughs> repeating the rhyme over and over to yourself. God damn it. You walk across <laughs> to the alcove. Thanks, Super Sea Lion. At the back of the alcove are some steps leading down into a cellar. Cobwebs brush your face as you descend. The cellar ceiling is quite low, and the floor is strewn with debris. In the middle of the wall opposite you is an archway, which leads... The floor is strewn with Debbie. Debbie is always strewning herself everywhere. She's a terrible slut. Sorry. Ahem. Prostate exam, thank you for 30 months. And these C, thank you for four. Welcome back, guys. Appreciate you. Leads into another crystal-lit tunnel. There are large mushrooms growing on the debris to your right. Uh, can you move cam in front of captions? You want me to move it in front of this shit? Why would you, why would I do that? All right, uh, who did I give it to? I forgot, again. Oh, BB Jaguar. That's right, my choice is step through the archway, gotcha. Okay, step through the archway. Um... Next choice goes to Tater Tot for the win. You get the next choice, Tater Tot. The tunnel continues west for several hundred meters, finally ending at some steps leading up to a closed trap door. You climb the steps slowly, hearing muffled voices above you. In the dim light, you can see that the trap door is not locked. All right, lay it on me, Tater Tot. Burst through the trap door with your sword drawn or knock on the trap door. <clears throat> Let's be polite, knock on the door. Sounds good, sounds good, I like it. Um, next is going to uh, Bad Jevlin. Bad Jevlin, you get the next choice. You hear footsteps and suddenly the trap door is thrown back. For a few seconds, you are completely blinded by the bright light from the room above ah! and do not see the goblin thrusting ah. his spear downwards or hear his sadistic laughter as the point pierces your neck. What? Your adventure. Oh, come on! A fucking goblin! A fucking goblin! Man, fuck you! Fucking one-shotted by a goblin. All right. All right, uh, let's see. The tunnel continues <clears throat> west for several hundred meters, finally ending at some steps leading up to a closed trap door. You climb the steps slowly, hearing muffled voices above you. In the dim light, you can see that the trap door 
is not locked. All right, Jevlin. Oh, this is this is not your choice because this is not really a choice because we know what happens if we knock. So we'll we'll burst through the door. You'll get the next one after this. A knock again. You throw the trap door open and run up the steps into a bright, lantern lit room. Two goblins are sharpening their short swords on a stone set in the short middle of the swords. floor. You catch them momentarily off guard, but they quickly recover and both rush forward to attack you. A point of note here. <clears throat> oh, Thank okay. You. What? Because of the shape of the room, both goblins will have a separate attack on you in each attack round. However, here your attack will only be effective on one of the goblins. Against the other, you must still use your attack strength in a normal way. But even if your attack would have been effective, you will not wound it. It will just count this as though you have defended yourself. However, if its attack strength is greater, it will have wounded you in the normal way. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna eat first. You quickly eat some provisions, increasing your stamina by four points. There we go. And now we attack the first goblin. You lunge at the creature's stomach with your sword drawn. Fuck! But the creature whips around, parrying your blow. Okay. Neither of you are harmed. Okay. Oh, I'm. Oh, the second goblin. I, I go back and forth. Okay. That's a you win. You both swing for each other, and in the confusion, both miss. <laughs> okay. Because the first goblin is the one I can damage. Fuck me! You try to run around the side of the creature, but it grabs your arm, throwing you hard into the wall. You manage to get around the back of your enemy, but it quickly kicks backward, catching you oh, agonizing shit. in your stomach. Looking at the wrong fucking ones. Come on! Can we score a hit? We should be scoring hit. There we go. That's a tie, but I got a higher thing. You hurl yourself at your enemy. Yarg! Flailing. There you go. Land stunning. Luck power. roll. Let's luck it up. Luck it up. Just gotta get under eleven. <laughs> Barely, but we did it. By your luck. Your luck is luck. in. It's in. Yes. Attack. Attack. You lunge at the creature's stomach with your sword drawn, but the creature whips around, parrying your blow. All right. Neither of you are harmed. <sighs> Come on. Let's hit it. Big rolls. There you go. There you go. That's a big roll. You thrust your sword, and you clearly damage Splark! the creature. Attack it again. We have the high ground. Yes, tie is me! Strong. I get one point Swear. higher. And screams wow. in pain as your sword sinks into his leg. One more time. Boom! Big money, big money. Readying yourself for another Fuck. attack, you fail to see the rock flying towards you. Your stamina is reduced as it lands. God damn it, he threw a rock at my face! There you go. Oh, that's money. You hurl yourself at your enemy. Fists ah! flailing and land a stunning blow. <laughs> Fists Triumphant flailing. In one of your toughest battles to date. You see that the only furniture in the goblin's room is a large is a chair. Table, There's a hobbit sitting in it. And a cupboard on the wall. Um... There are two closed doors, one in the west wall and the other in the north wall. <laughs> Motherfuckers. God damn it, I hate my mods. I hate them. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I gave this to Jevlin. Bad Jevlin, you need to make this choice. Open the north door, uh... west door, or cupboard? 
So north door, west door, or the cupboard. Up to you, Bad Jevlin. Cupboard! <laughs> Thank you, Soulstorm Brew. Thank you, Zader. And thank you, Incursion172 with 20 months. The cupboard contains a wooden mallet and 10 iron spikes, which you put in your backpack. Oh, iron spikes for like, okay. Which door to open? For climbing. I've got a rope. I've got pythons or pitons. I don't know how to say it. <clears throat> All right, Shmi OG with the prime sub. Hey, Elder Seeker. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Who is next? Let's do, uh, Scott B. Scott B, do you want to go north or west, Scott B? Myth Obstacle the Fourth. thank you for 11. Welcome back. Almost got that third stripe. Come on, Scott B, where are we going? North or west for the Dragon Strike? No way. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you denying a choice? Go west, young man. Okay. <laughs> like, fucking, what the fuck? Don't fucking do that to me. Uh, all right, Boone Phoenix, you got the next choice. The door opens into another tunnel. Walking west, you soon arrive at another door in the north wall. Okay, continue west or open the door there, Boone. Boone Phoenix. Open or continue west. Open the door. Get on the floor. Everybody do the dinosaur. The door opens into a small room in which there is a human skull with jeweled eyes resting on the top of a marble plinth. A row of loaded crossbows is fixed to the left-hand wall, and two small wooden balls lie on the floor, just inside the door. 67 Ghosted, you get the next choice. Okay, 67 Ghosted, what should we do? Close the door, continue west, taking the balls, throw a wooden ball at the skull from the doorway, or walk into the room and pick up the skull. All right. 67, what do you want? Throw! Okay, throw a wooden ball at the skull from the doorway. That sounds like the smartest choice. Let's go ahead and do that. You take aim. Cypher Nil, you're next. And hurl the wooden ball at the skull. A test of skill. Oh, yep, get under, oh God, no! Oh my fucking the God! The wooden whistles past the skull hitting the far wall with a loud crack. <sighs> All right, Cypher Nil, try again or continue, close the door and continue west. I had to get under a, tw a 10 and I got a t fucking 12. Yeah, uh, skill checks, you gotta get underneath the score. Try again, all right. You take aim. One more time. And hurl the wooden ball at the <clears throat> skull. A test of skill. Ten or under. Oh, you, you better fuck right off. I was just going to say, fuck the you. The wooden ball whistles past the skull, hitting the far wall with a loud crack. What? You have already oh, thrown Oh, skill! Twice. That's my sword! I've got to get this so under a six. The door fuck. And continue west along the tunnel. Son of a the bitch. The tunnel takes a sharp Not turn. Not luck, it's skill. You find skill. yourself in a sort of gallery. My skill is lined bad. Lined with mirrors for some 20 meters. A human skeleton appears to be pulled halfway through the mirror along the right-hand wall. Suddenly, a grotesque being with four arms and four screaming faces emerges from the mirror, barring your way ahead. It walks slowly towards you. All right, Fuzzy Tickle. Each arm outstretched to grab you. Fuzzy Tickle, you got the next one. It's a mirror demon from another dimensional plane. Come to take your spirit. All right, attack the mirror demon with your sword or try to smash the mirrors. What do you think, Fuzzy Tickle? Attack the mirror demon? Okay. Uh, 
Uh, next choice goes to Ambulancer. The mirror demon, being solely intent on grabbing your arm, makes no attempt to defend itself. But beware. The mirror demon is a phenomenally powerful creature. If during any attack round, the mirror demon's attack strength is greater than your own, it will win. Wow, 10 plus? Jesus. Oh my God. You thrust your sword. You clearly damage the creature, but it still advances. Luck it. Luck it. Let's go, luck. No, God, Niner. Yes, underneath. Luck. Okay, good. Okay. Your luck. So we get two more. Bloop. Wow, we got to really beat the shit out of this thing to win. Yeah, I'm not. Nope. Ouchies. Ouchies. Gotta get really high rolls. There's a nine. You swing at the demon, but your need Fuck. to keep your distance means it's hard Fuck. to reach. Man, I gotta beat it by a lot. Shit. Oh, God! I gotta beat it by four! Oh, shit, fuck. I, oh, I, whoops. Nine versus eight. Oh, God damn it! You quickly eat some provisions, increasing your stamina by four points. Shit! Come on, let's go. You smash Nine your sword two. into its arm. You feel like yes. you're hurting it, but it continues to approach. Come on, luck. Underneath the nine. There you go, that's fine. Eight is good. You try your luck. Enjoy All right, luck. one more hit. One more hit, we win. Shit, fuck. You quickly eat some provisions, increasing your stamina by four points. One more hit, come on. We just gotta beat it by four. Big rolls. Oh, fucking God, Jesus. Wow. Just wrecked me. Oh, there you go, 11. 11 for seven. a rock and hurl it at the demon. Ah, but your aim is off, fuck. and you miss it completely. I need big numbers, big numbers! No, come on! Fucking shit! That was a great roll! Sorry, I'm plugging my headphones. Oh no! You quickly eat some provisions, increasing your stamina by four points. One more hit, come on! Nine you versus... swing at the demon, but yes! you need to keep no, your distance fuck! means it's hard to God reach. God damn it, it's so close. Ten? Ten versus nine! Stop rolling well when I do, you fucking cunt! Ten versus four, you we got swing it that time! Boom, Your sword bitch! Connects, but Whew. it continues towards you. Summoning all your strength, you deal the mirror demon one final blow with your sword. With an ear splitting sound, cracks begin to run across its faces and limbs. Its many mouths cry out in the agony of its death throes before the demon shatters completely and falls to the ground in a pile of tiny fragments. I wonder what would happen if we hit the mirrors first. You heave a huge sigh of relief and then hurry on past. In front of you, 
are two flights of stone steps separated by a banister of rat skulls. Oh, shit. Did I? Oh, Ambulancer, it's you. Right or left? And then after that, we'll give it to Saito. Left. Ambulancer says left. All right, Saito, your next choice. Treading carefully, you slowly make your way up the steps. You soon reach the top without mishap and continue along the new tunnel, which takes the sharp turn right. After a hundred meters in the tunnel, a hundred? you come to a junction. Looking left, Conjunction junction? you see the dead bodies of two orc guards. At least one of your rivals in the trial of champions oh. must still be ahead of I you. I say I kill two orcs. A get, quick search of the bodies circle. produces nothing apart from a necklace of teeth hanging around the neck of one of the orcs. All right. Set off north with, oh, take the necklace or leave the necklace? Or, excuse me, wear the necklace or leave it? What do you think? Wear it. Of course. Of course wear it. Um, because it's probably cursed. Uh, next choice goes to... Victa, non sub choice Victa, V I K T A A H H H. The necklace is an amulet of strength which adds one skill point and one stamina point. Yeah! Pleased with your find, you continue your quest north. Oh, for sure it was cursed. The tunnel soon ends at a junction. Standing there alone, and wondering which way to go is one of your rivals. It is one of the barbarians. You call out to him, but at first he does not answer. He merely stares at you coldly, his hands firmly gripping his ax. You walk up to him and ask which way he is heading. He grunts his reply, saying that he is going west, and you may go with him if you wish. Oh yeah, okay, so what do you think, Victor? Decline and head uh, head east alone, or accept and head west with the barbarian. What do you think? And now you're a sub victor, thanks to Doctor Claw. Hey, Oberseeker. All right, head west. Go with the barbarian. You got it. All right, next choice going to Alethea. Alethea, you get the next choice. Although you are slightly uneasy in each other's company, knowing that there can only be one winner in the trial of champions. There can only be one. You're both content to share in the benefits of a temporary alliance. And you begin to tell each other jokes of your exploits so far, of the monsters and traps encountered and the dangers overcome. You begin to flirt lightly. Walking along, you soon come to the edge of a wide pit. It is too deep and dark to see to the bottom. Throw your shield the in barbarian it. suggests he lowers you to the bottom with his rope, saying he has a torch which he can light for you to use. Okay, Alethea. Suggests you both jump over the pit instead. Offer to lower him down if he is so eager to investigate the pit or accept the barbarian's offer. What do you think, Alethea? Killian Hart, 13 months. My unlucky number. I have to watch in 160p due to internet shittiness. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, thankfully, this isn't very graphically heavy. It's more text or more, uh, well, text and voice and stuff. We both jump. I hate you. I hate that choice. All right, here we go. The barbarian reluctantly agrees to your alternative suggestion. You both step back and take running jumps over the pit, landing safely on the other side. Woo! Pleased with the ease with which you clear the obstacle, you continue down the tunnel. JD Power, you get the, the next barbarian, choice. Barbarian, now a little reckless, fails to see a raised floor stone, which tilts forward as he stumbles over it, releasing a huge boulder loosely set in the ceiling. The rock crashes down on top of the barbarian, knocking him to the floor, crushing his skull. You must now continue your Man. quest. Alone. Well, 
better him than me, right? Feeling sorry for the loss of your <coughs> companion, you carry on down the tunnel. Search him! What are you doing? Suddenly you see daylight. You run towards the most beautiful sight you have seen for a long time and emerge, expecting to see the welcoming sight of cheering people. But there is no hero's welcome from the people all around you. Oh, fuck. They are dead. You are standing in a cold chamber littered with armored skeletons and bodies. The exit to victory was just an illusion. Only the corpses of the past adventures are real. <clears throat> Utterly dejected, you walk back towards the tunnel, but hit an invisible barrier. You, like the adventurous trick before you, are trapped in this ghoulish place and destined to end your days in the chamber of the dead. Oh, come on! Oh, fuck, that was it! Oh, fuck you! Fuck you! God damn it. Ugh. No, we had to go through. Okay, so we made the choice, like the choice to jump over, and then there was just a long explanation of how the barbarian died and how we died. So it just wasted our fucking time. Great. All right. Well, man, I want to come back to this for sure. But before we go uh, to break and choose the next game, um, and I'm sorry, JD Power, they didn't get your choice. I want to see if it just continues and or saves automatically. Oh, it does. Okay, good. Cool. Saves our progress. Excellent. Man, that was a fun fucking game, dude. Fun fucking game.